Ahmed Suale's death was one that shocked the media fraternity and indeed a tarnation. My colleague Sarah Paco has been engaging some journalists to find out if they feel safe after his gruesome murder a year ago. Out an online scholarship process in March this year. We start off with the Ghana Premier League where Accra had to walk finally secured their first win out of three games. Journalists go through difficult times in their line of duty. In Ghana, some journalists have gone through abuse because of their work. The figures are staggering. From January 2018, at least 11 journalists have come under one form of attack or another, either from the police or other public officials. But what shook the country was the murder of Tiger Eye investigator Ahmed Hussein Swali. The assassins remain unknown one year on, and this has put some fear in journalists. I would say I have become more paranoid because uh, if I hear any sound behind my window at night, I panic. Like I said, if I see any motorbike riding behind me at night or even try to overtake me at night, I panic. And because of that, I have improved on uh, the security. My car lock was faulty. I made sure it is now fully functional. For Zoe Abu Beidu Adu, Ahmed Swale's death has taught her a lesson on personal security. Just yesterday, okay, so I'm driving home and there's this car that keeps following me throughout. I don't know, but it's something that everybody should do. But this car followed me just right from my office, okay, so for about five, ten minutes. So I had to actually stop at an open place um, where people, to allow the car move because I wasn't too sure. Spokesperson for undercover investigative journalist Anas Arimiyao Anas, Latif Abubakar, doesn't feel safe either. He insists as long as perpetrators of crimes against journalists are walking free, one cannot be safe. We don't believe we feel safe. Um, just because we feel that what happened to Ahmed Swali could happen to anybody. And uh, for one year, we have no news as to uh, who were the ones behind it and so on and so forth. Uh, we are left in the dark, nothing happens. It means it could happen to anybody at all who is a journalist. A political show host, Umaru Sanda, cannot agree more. It is not just exclusive to journalists, but generality of the society. How do people feel? We have paid a group of people, we call them the Ghana Police Service. Our job, or their, our job is to pay them, and their job is to protect us. That's why we pay them, and that's why we've given them uniforms and weapons. Now, when you have a case, you expect that the state would be able to deal with it judiciously for you. If for over a year a human being has been killed in his own vehicle in front of his house and we still do not have any clue, then it questions as to whether I should continue to fund these particular police officers that have been funding to protect me. The president of the Ghana Journalist Association, Afel Moni, however, is of the view journalists should feel safe to do their work. We shouldn't take anything for granted. As media practitioners, we should sharpen our sense of security and heighten our sense of safety. Thus, we will ensure that we do not fall easy prey to the enemies of press freedom who are still lurking around, especially in this election year. It's a year on since the death of investigative journalist Ahmed Swali. Are journalists safer in the country? This is the question journalists are asking until the police bring perpetrators of his murder to book. We won't be sure of our safety in this country. Sarah Paku, TV3 News, Accra. Well, it's, it's a very sad moment, especially for all of us in this fraternity. Uh, I've been joined in the studio by Musa Mukaz, who is a relative of, in fact, the brother of the late Ahmed Hussein Swale. Musa, thank you for the, making the time to be with us here. I'm sure that beyond the loss, the feeling of loss, it's also a moment of a lack of justice for you. A year on, how, how, do, how, how are you marking today? How, what are the emotions that you're greeted with today? Thank you very much for the opportunity. Good for the Almighty Allah to grant us the opportunity. Without accountability. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's been feeling of 
sad moments, lack of hope, and we do not know exactly what is happening now to our brother's case. You don't know what's happening now. But the police said that the docket is not closed. They are late. Investigations are still ongoing. You, you heard the police we spoke to in, in that story we played earlier, and that they have a lot of leads which they are following, and, and, and you, you lost hoping that? I doubt the statements of the police. Why? First of all, you and I would believe a lot of Ghanaians do not even know or have no idea who Swali was or what he was working or what he was doing. Somebody exposed Swali to the general public. He didn't just expose him, gave direction where he could be located, disclosed his identity on national TV, did not even stop at that, called out public anger or incited people to attack him, and also motivated the general public by saying he would even award or pay people if Swali was attacked. Who is this person? You're this member about? of parliament is called Honorable Ken Ajapong. He's free out there. Nothing has happened. He hasn't been arrested. The man has not been even investigated. How this do you know that? How do you know he hasn't been investigated? We would have been witnesses to it. We would have gone to court to see him have his day. So did you find out from the police whether he has been invited for any questioning in, on, in on fact, that matter? There was a period in time where he himself came live either on radio or TV. When it was even portrayed, he was invited. He said, no, the police did not even invite him. They came to his house. Yes, so there has been some sort of engagement between him and the police. So did you find out from the police uh, how that engagement ended? What did they talk to him about? What did he say? How did it end that they have actually gone off him? We tried and the police had nothing on Ken's case. Simple. If you were to say something bad about a parliamentarian, I'm sure you know where you'll be headed the next day. They'll call you to parliament and said we have done one or two. And they call it what? Privileges committee. This is a sitting member of parliament who is not just an ordinary Ghanaian, a legislator who caused somebody's life and not just that, the fellow is dead today. He's not been questioned by parliament. parliament. Parliament has not sanctioned him. He's free out there and he's even talking. And the worst of it, that they were even coming to bury Swali. Mr. Kerry Japan said he had no regrets for what has happened to Swali. He said this what? He said it on air. I was listening to his comments on radio. As, where, where did he say this? It was a tree station. Either it was I, I a Sampa. I, 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 in, in as much as we cannot authenticate this, and, and obviously not doubt because we don't know. But the but point the I'm trying to make available. is that um, the police engaged him, right? Uh, the engagement, I, I, I'm talk, we are talking of murder here. Yes. If you and I, if I were to threaten your life, mm -hmm. few days thereafter, and something happens to you, I do not think the police will just come and talk to me and walk away. I see. So Naturally, I'll be arrested. So there will be a docket on me. So as you and I speak, is there a docket on Ken Ajapon? So if, if I get the understanding, in as much as you, you know that the police engage him, you are not satisfied with what you heard from the police about him. So what's the way forward for you? The issue has two legs. One leg is exactly to identify the killers or murderers of Swali. Mm -hmm. The other leg is somebody who exposed him to the element of danger that led to the murder. That person we know. The killers we do not know. Now, if you cannot even deal with what you know, how are we sure you can even deal with what you do not know? Are you saying that you do not have confidence in the police to investigate the death of Ahmed Swali? I am not the one saying they have not proven it. They need to prove it. If... But As I'm speaking to you, you don't have any other alternative in, in getting this um, but to lend the police all the support they need to be able to get to the bottom of this matter. We Don't have given so. the police every needed support all along. You can find out from them. They have never requested the family to be there that we don't go. There have never been any information that they require of us that we do not make it available to them. But sometimes they even, for about three months, we had nothing from them. Even the gentleman who was on the case was sent on a foreign duty without our knowledge. There was no even a single person reporting to the family as to what was happening. A lot had happened in between. So therefore, the family is not just deciding not to have hope, but conditions have been created for us not to have that hope. So, 
So what's the next phase for you? The next if phase you are not is having hope. The next phase is the president is the father of all the people of this country. I would say he has the final authority and see on a lot of issues, especially when it comes to security as the commander in chief. The family is appealing to the president to use the authority to let us get justice. Right. And we are calling on members of parliament, including the speaker, to deal with their own, who hasn't conducted himself very well as far as Swali's murder case is concerned. If, if you say to deal with their own, what, kind, what are you talking about? Simple. You because are a journalist. the police has investigated this matter, and I'm sure that they, you know, in the process of their investigation, have engaged the person that you're talking about. So what we're going to do is, I'm sure, going forward, is also to find out exactly what the position of the police is on him, and that would give us some clarity. Now, let me, clear, you, let me clarify you, you, this. You think so, in, in, in 20 seconds. My good friends, you are a journalist. If a journalist commits some kind of professional misconduct, it's the GJE that will deal with it. Mm -hmm. You and I are here. Sometimes a policeman commits a crime or a military person. It's the okay. military who deals with that. This is a member of parliament. So we expect parliament to have dealt with Ken's case, at least, to have dealt with their own because he has misconducted himself in the general public view. This is the gentleman who called in, Ghanaians in, to attack an innocent journalist. In the view of the general public, you see. Thank you. Musa Mokaz is a relative, in fact, the brother of Ahmed Hussein Tswale, and they are calling on the president to do a lot more in urging the police to be able to get to the end of this matter. It's just a year on, uh, but we are not leaving this issue here. We're still going to keep focus on it and keep asking the questions, begging for answers.